Okay, hello again, Marion Dorflinger. And um, among other things, I carve walking sticks. And this is the only perfect walking stick I have ever carved in my life. And that experience was so beautiful, I hope I never carve another one that's perfect. Anyway, I very often go walking and I have a walking stick that I carved and somebody sees it. Here, take this. You gonna give this to me? <laughs> sure, if I ask for money, nobody will give it to me. And if I don't get rid of them, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I have gotten to the point where I've taken six or eight and put a little three by five business card on this string and free to a good home, that kind of thing. But this one, this one needs to tell a story because this is an elm tree out of the bottleneck of the few survivors of the Dutch elm disease that wiped out the beautiful, beautiful elm trees that used to line the streets of America. Somewhere in the 50s, maybe, a uh, shipment of lumber to Ohio from Europe or somewhere had some wood borers that were not native to America, and they thrived in this environment, and they started the Dutch elm disease, and the Dutch elm, the, the elm tree was iconic in American cities. Um, before there was air conditioning, they would line the streets with these incredible shade trees, and uh, the Dutch elm disease killed them. And a lot of people thought that the elm was extinct in the USA, but there was an infinitesimal population that survived. And from that genetic strain, they made a genetic resistant elm tree that overcame the Dutch elm disease. And the elm tree is making a comeback in the USA. And this is one of the survivors until the highway department decided it needed to remove the brush along the shoulder. And they cut this beautiful little tree off right at the base and threw it out there where an errant woodcarver could pick it up and know what he had in his hands. And this elm tree is one of the survivors until the highway department decided it was just in the way and it was inconvenient. So this will find a good home. And the story will go with this one. I was truly amazed at the quality of the wood. I had found another elm branch a, a time or two before and had carved off the top layer and the bark between, you know, the outer bark and the heartwood has this incredible pattern. And I was gonna, I was just gonna stop there with this one. I was just gonna go to the outer, the inner bark. And I was just curious, what would happen if I took that off? And this happened. And there's a spot right here, if I can find it. See that spot right there? There's a white spot right, right there. It's hard to see in the camera, but if you held it in your hand, you, you couldn't miss it. And that white spot just stood out like a beating heart. It's surrounded by redwood, but there's one white spot. And if you look right here, you'll see that there is a perfectly round core and a little bit of discoloration. That may be the Dutch elm disease that this species would get. Like some people get cancer and their body rejects a cancer and kills a cancer on its own. But uh, the rest of the story about the elm tree is that through the centuries, um, the elm tree has hit a bottleneck again and again and again and again. And there's always been a remnant to come back and tell the truth and live. And that's a metaphor for, for human life.
Again and again and again, humanity has reached a bottleneck and it looked like all was lost. And there were a few survivors who came back again and again and again. And maybe we can do it again. But if we can't, I'll bet you there will be an elm tree that was saved by a human being. The ancestor of that elm tree was saved by a human being. And if humanity goes extinct, there will be elm trees because humans did at least one thing right. And as a woodcarver and a historian, I save this artifact to say, sometimes the descendants of the survivors die because they're in the way of progress. Progress. And in the name of progress, but there are always survivors, or there always have been survivors, who bear seed and pass it on, whether it's an elm tree or the truth or love. So I can't wait to get this in the right set of hands to set in a corner and say, this elm tree I had on St. Crispin's Day. Thank you, Mr. Shakespeare.